So let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Good afternoon, Jules. Uh, my name is uh, Claudio. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. From the Susan Fairfax City, we're very humble and grateful that Jules Maxwell accepted our invitation to the show. Jules, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, Claudio. It's nice to be here. I'm in uh, sunny London, yep. London town in England. Good for you, man. So, all right, so let's go back to the beginning. Were, were you born like in a, in a musical family or how old were you when you started playing, you know, piano or taking guitar lessons at, at the time, if you can recall? I, you know, my mother was, my mother sang, uh, my father wasn't very musical, but I, along with my brothers, was sent to piano lessons with the lady who lived just up the road from us. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then when I was at, at school, I played brass instruments. I played trumpet and um, eventually played in a, in a brass band in Belfast. Where I, I'm originally from, from a place called Bangor in, uh, in the north of Ireland, about 15 miles from Belfast. So, uh, yeah, it was mostly piano and brass instruments that I began playing when I was younger. Uh, are you a musician? Uh, no, I don't know how to read music or play music, but I've been listening music from the last 50 years, five hours a day. My right. music collection is about, I don't know, 6,000 CDs, 3,000 vinyls, those of so. But you must be a singer. Huh? You must, you must sing. No, uh, no, in the car, but uh, yeah, yeah, good, good. Well, what are you saying then? Yeah, but I have a a wide range and appreciation for different music, and oh, that can dance. I've been listening to them from I don't know, 15, 20 years, and it's 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 like a myth. It's a mystery. Every every time I go to see a show, you know, Lisa sometimes sings in in languages that will. I don't know, make up languages or weird languages like the new album and and, and the electronic and you play the keyboard and Brendan. It's it, it's another world altogether. If you, let me put it to you. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. but I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. So over the last thirty years, you you've been involved with <clears throat> in dance production, film production, uh, creating music for choreographer and so forth. So you have been. Uh, is, are you still doing that, or you're pretty much concentrated in the in the condensed stuff? Well, no. I mean, I'm uh, I am still absolutely um, doing a whole variety of different things. Uh, you know, working for me, working with Dead Condense is just something that comes up every few years. Um, we're meant to be um, uh, touring. Um, you know. Uh, we have been meant to be touring over the last couple of years, but of course the pandemic has hit us quite badly. So uh, in the meantime, I've had to do other work and yeah, I continue to, to, to write music for theatre and, um, you know, and for dance as well. My wife's a dancer. She runs a dance company here in London. Yep. And uh, a lot of my bread and butter work as a composer is making music for, for theater and dance. I also, you know, play with other singers and have other projects that I do, that, that I um, undertake both as a musician and as a writer. Um, so yeah, it's a wide variety of things to keep the wolves from the door yep. uh, and keep a roof over, the, over, over our heads. I got you. Yeah, good for you. How did you end up joining uh, uh, Dead Can Dance with, uh, with Lisa and Brendan? Do you remember? Well, yeah, I mean, as with most good things in life, you they're not really planned. Um, and, and they're mostly to do with connections you have with people and sort of chance meetings and whatever. I, there's a, a, a a very good friend of mine from Ireland who had toured with Brandon uh, for his ARC uh, solo album, which must be 20 years ago Yep. now. Um, and through this guy, Steve, I met Brandon. And then Brandon 
invited me to tour with him in, in 2005, 2007 um, on his solo tour around Europe. And we, we got on well and kept in contact. And then when Dead Condats were touring in 2012, he invited me to join, uh, to join the, to, to join Dead Condats for that tour. And that's when I first met Lisa. Mm -hmm. And, um, one thing has led, led to another from there. So that was, that was the beginning of things, uh, through my <clears throat> friend, Steve. And then in 2019, I think you rejoined the, them for uh, I think a celebration the life works yep that's right so they did and I know as I mentioned before I know you guys I don't know if you particularly but uh, they can that's very popular in Latin America I know you have mm -hmm. been in Chile many times and uh, you know yeah. It causes yeah, sensation. We, yeah we love it down in Chile um, and in Mexico uh, and actually we were meant to be going to Peru and Colombia uh, last year for a tour, which ended up being um, cancelled, which would have been lovely as well. Um, yeah. All right, gotcha. So feel free to elaborate about the album called Burn with, with Lisa, and then how the whole concept of the album together uh, for people that- Well, want... you know, I had, um, I had enjoyed one of the one of the joys for me of, of that first tour with Dead Can Dance was getting to know Lisa for the first time, um, and, and there was one song at the end of the set which we used to improvise together, just her and me, and uh, you know, um, I was really uh, looking forward to the possibility of doing some stuff with her outside the band and she was up for it as well. Lisa, as you know, is in addition to Dead Can Dance has always been involved in many other side projects over the years, not just her movies, but with different composers. So, um, and she's very, very open to the possibility of um, collaboration. So, so she collaborated with the other keyboard player from Dead Can Dance, Astrid Williamson and she collaborated with one of the percussionists, David Cookerman, on albums. So the album I did with her was um, was just the latest in a long line of uh, collaboration albums she's done. Um, it, we, it began as a, an opportunity to work with uh, a, a wonderful choir of uh, in Bulgaria. Yep. Uh, I, I was actually approached to um, to submit five or six songs for for an album that they were making, um, and I invited Lisa to come in and join me to write on that. So um, we I, I spent some time in Australia uh, at her house. She's got a lo lovely studio down there, and we put together the the bones of the songs for uh, for the Bulgarian women. And then subsequently, I listened back to some of the stuff that we had recorded during that week in Australia and realized that there was there was um, material there for, for another album. So one yeah. thing led to another. And this Burn album, which is, is out this year, uh, finally came together piece by piece. But um, it, it was never actually intended to be a record in its own right. It was uh, just um, a, a lot of outtakes from the Bulgarian um, project. Yeah, um, I got you. So uh, I think you, I was listening to, um, of course, I, I had the album and I listened to one of the best uh, hits in, in Spotify and sales on Amazon. And you guys have done very well. So it's a well-received album by the by mm -hmm. the people like to like that kind of music uh, yeah the what do you mean the the album with lisa the no no, album no. Or, it's or it's uh it, in terms of sales have done well at least from uh you know website that you know keep track of how many times somebody had bought an album and the number of people who have listened to yeah. uh, that particular 
record on Spotify have done well? I think you guys are. Well, it's been it's been pleasing. It seems to have been reasonably well received uh, by people, um, and there's some, been some very kind uh, critical responses to it. So, so that's great. Yeah, and uh, and like I mentioned before, you know, sometimes obviously independent of being Bulgarian or Chinese or Spanish, uh, Lisa in many ways uses like a language that sometimes, I don't know, it wouldn't mean anything, uh, but uh, if I were somebody were to translate that, but the way she used her voice, uh, the, the keyboard behind the scene or whatever is, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unbelievable, I don't know if I'm describing that correctly, or, but I don't know if it's a, well, it's, Beautiful experience. You know, meaning meaning for people doesn't have to be literal. Um, it's one of the things that I learned from uh, working in different languages. Yeah. Um, you know, I've written for projects in, in Ireland in uh, in the Irish language, um, yeah. I, 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 which is a language that I, I actually don't understand. Uh, and, and, and I've worked with I'm currently working with a Portuguese singer and, and the Bulgarian women, obviously, and then Lisa. All, all these people are singing in, in languages that I don't understand, but each of these languages can mean something, even if you don't literally understand it. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's, there's an element of uh, meaning yeah. which exists beyond the literal. Um, so when people listen to Lisa's voice, it, 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 you can see it, that it means something to them, which is really specific and really profound, yeah. but it's just you're not able to put it into language. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like somebody told me a, a while ago, well, there's good music and bad music. So, you know, whether you like it and you enjoy it, don't translate it, leave the moment for an hour and a half or whatever and enjoy the moment. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, like, like, of course, some some people's good music is an uh, is another person's bad music, and, and yeah, you know, yeah. vice versa. So, yeah. it's very subjective, and also a piece of music could mean something to you one day and not, and not the next day. So uh, it's it's amazing the way music can affect you, yeah, or, or have different. Uh, resonances at different times of your life um, and, uh, and there is actually also something quite interesting about um, working with uh, you know uh, obviously Lisa's voice is more akin to an instrument you know um, instrumental music doesn't have words that you understand but it can still have a sense of meaning um, and she thinks very much of her voice as an instrument, as a, and also as a sort of channeling of um, of something um, spiritual, almost. Um, yeah. it, it, it is one of the the privileges of working with Dead Can Dance is to be able to to watch the audience's faces. Yeah. Particularly, particularly when she is singing. Yeah. Um, it's a very aff affecting yeah. um, um, process for people. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, and and also you know Brendan Brendan voice is very unique as well. Of course, well, I, I, I mean yeah. I, I I absolutely love Brendan's voice. I mean yeah. one of the you know. But 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 Brendan's voice is is to my to my ears yeah much more um, in a um, Western tradition uh, and, and actually he his voice reminds me um, often of uh, like Frank Sinatra he's got yeah. that sort of jazz quality to it as well and yeah. and he's great I mean he's a great Led Zeppelin fan, and he he loves, you know, Western, the classic. Rock, rock music, Western rock music. Really does. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's it's the 
It's a very unusual combination. And I, I think I, that's what people love about it, because it's quite unique in that way. I I have about, I don't know, I think I have 10 records on uh, that can dance and some, you know, some stuff from Brendan by himself and then this and uh, Every time I put a, a, a dead can dance and I put my, my headphones, I have a different experience. Uh, I mean, some album that I listened to, whatever, four weeks ago, and I, you know, bring it out, out of the, you know, the closet or, you know, the bookshelf. Uh, it give me a different experience uh, uh, with some other classic, like, I don't know, Led Zeppelin. I have the same feeling every day if I listen to three days in a row. But this dead can dance is like another, I, I kind of, transport myself into another world if you will and that's yeah. what at least music does to me and uh, um, so the, the new tour will start in San Diego uh, a couple of weeks and uh, how long is the rehearsal process for uh, Dead Can Dance? Normally we we rehearse for two weeks two weeks. In, um, at Brandon's place down in, uh, in France yeah. so uh that's the plan for that. Um, it's coming yeah, up, so right? Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but then there's a there's a European tour that begins next March, April. Yeah, yeah. So and that'll be exciting as well. And then various plans for for next year as well. So yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. I'm going to be seeing you guys three times. I think. Uh, let me see if I get the dates correctly. So in in October 11, I'm seeing here at the Washington DC and the Anthem, which is a beautiful theater. Then the day after, um, driving to Philadelphia. And then the last time um, on Friday, the 15th, I think I'm, dry, I'm catching a flight to Boston. And so happy that I'm going to be there. And uh, so I'm going Great. to be seeing you guys three times in, uh, in one week. Okay. So it's, it's a well, privilege, honor for me to, to be visiting you. You will like the Amphen. The Amphen in DC is a very beautiful uh, uh, place, brand new yeah. place. Well, I look forward. I, I look forward to to seeing you and meeting you there for sure. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I know you you're running short time. You don't have anyone. So, get, if you can you look back in your life, um, Jules, and elaborate on your kind of musical influences, if you will, over, over your life. Mm -hmm. So feel free to elaborate your, who, you know, who was influential in your life when you growing up or the listen that the music that you were listening when you were, I don't know, 18 or 18 years old. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, um, I have a very eclectic um, musical uh, background. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I grew up in Ireland and Irish music has always been important to me. Um, but actually, when I was growing up in the 80s, um, you know, uh, I, I, you know, this is one of one of the joys of working with Dead Can Dance is that I actually wasn't really listening to them back in the 80s. I was much more into more, um, I, I don't know, I guess, more traditional pop music. Um, so... Um, I was interested in Elton John in the 70s. I was interested in Stevie Wonder. I was very interested in Van Morrison. I was interested in the Electric Light Orchestra. Yeah. Uh, I was also interested in um, bands like uh, Japan and Ra Raichi Sakamoto. Of course, I know. Um, and as I grew older, I began to dip more and more into classical music and jazz music um, and I and folk music actually um, so it's very very eclectic my my interest in music um, and I guess I often say to people that um, I'm actually more interested in drama than I am in music. So, um, you know, even within, um, within th particularly working in theatre, I began to realise that uh, 
you in order to serve the drama you often could be very very minimal in your uh, intervention musically um and that began to interest me and i began to get interested in in the great minimalist uh composers of the 20th century um steve reich john cage philip glass gavin briars um so yeah I, I actually don't really listen to a lot of music. I prefer listening to documentaries, radio documentaries, podcasts. Uh, but music is sort of embedded within my my life in a very profound way. Um, I hear music wherever I go, even in the rhythms of trains and the, the hums of air conditioning systems. So... Um, yeah, it's a very, very broad perspective on music that I have. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, good for you, man. So, uh, seeing you, you guys have tour worldwide. It's is there uh, any particular concert or one or two that that you will never forget? That everything clicked, the weather was great, the audience was great, and if in your back in your memory, is any any one or two or that, yeah. that you can say? I mean, well, I we mean the last. The yeah, the last concert that we ever played, that we played um, in 2019, um, which is the most recent concert that we ever did, was very special. It was in Athens. Yeah. Um, and it was like, it was on the, in a beautiful um, theatre, right on the, the um, Acropolis, with the Parthenon in the background, um, open air wonderful Greek amphitheater, absolutely packed, but it also felt like quite a profound moment for, for Brendan, particularly to be there at the seat of ancient Greek civilization, um, singing these songs that many of which he had written in a squat in London back in the eighties. Yep. And, and to be part of that, to be just a very small part of that journey for, uh, with Brendan felt very moving for me. Um, you know, we played some amazing shows in 2012 around um, America um, to play at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville was a great um, buzz for me to be on that stage. Um, uh, we played the Royal Albert Hall in London on a, on a very special night and, uh, a few years ago and, and a couple of really um, memorable shows in, um, in Sydney at the, at the Opera House there. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, but, you know, I mean, the shows that we did in Latin America and the shows, particularly down in Chile, were were amazing and always are. There's a sort of fervor from uh, the fans in Latin America, which is difficult to replicate. Yeah. So that was That's special. Good. good for you, man. Uh, do you miss uh, touring and, and playing live music? Some musicians like to studio. They don't want to go and tour for too long because for the family, the kids, and what what what's your your take on that? Um, yeah, I have a son. I have a son who's ten years old, um, so I don't like to be away too long from him. Um, luckily, the touring with Dead Can Dance tends to be like a couple of months uh, at a time, and then like quite a long break. Yeah, um, I've continued to play music, um, so even if it's small, uh, small concerts and sharings um so i don't feel as if i've stopped playing performing yep. live but yeah it'll be nice to be it's always quite nice to to travel and to see different places that's the thing about um touring that i enjoy most the shows themselves are often very sort of quite set affairs but i enjoy meeting people Yep. Uh, in different places 
so yeah i've missed i've missed that quite a lot yeah you will you will make it i know we are pressed on time is almost now 12 30 so you need to go but uh, uh it was very nice uh, talking to you uh you will hopefully if you have the time we have the opportunity to provide bid or you know a drink yeah. here in dc and uh, I, I, I just quickly, as Claudia, I'll, I'll mention um, a, a solo project that I've got going, which you know, oh, yeah. okay. some of your listeners might be interested in. Yes, yeah. um, there's it's it's a double album I'm releasing of, of instrumental music. Uh, it's yeah. happening. It's going to be released next um, March. An album called Cycles. Cycles. Yeah, and um, uh, it, it it's a companion piece to um to an album called nocturnes which is currently available people yeah. can find it, links on, on my on my website and my social media but it's available on, on all the st streaming platforms under my name and uh, i'm excited by that it's um i don't know if you've had a chance to listen to it to i, I did and song. also i like uh things think you didn't have that much time i didn't mention but i also like the um the flowers grow. It's a single EP, and yeah. I, I like your stuff. I mean, you know, people may know you for the after that condensed period, if you like, but you have done a lot more. I mean, like yeah. we talked at the beginning with theater, film production, and you are a lot more than they condensed. That's for me. It's unfortunate we didn't have the time to talk yeah. about that much stuff. But I know it's theater is music yeah, production yeah. is very important to you. You know. So. Well, you know, I'll, I'll be out touring. Um, the Nocturnes and Cycles albums next um, next year, and ho hoping to get over to the states to to do some gigs. So uh, that might be another opportunity for for us to hook up, or for any of your listeners to come along and and hear some of my more intimate stuff. Okay, so. sure. and, and feel free to uh, mention where our listener can buy your music, and feel free to mention your website and everything. Yes. Okay, so it's JulesMaxwell.com, easy to yep. remember. Uh, and if you do any searches for Jules Maxwell, you'll you'll find my Bandcamp uh, page and various social media accounts as well. So yep. yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Claudio. Thank and, you very much. Uh, you will have a great evening, and hopefully we can meet up here in DC. Yeah, look forward to it. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.